ABC, it's Ron. Thanks for joining me. I got a pretty cool pile here. There's going to be a lot of surprises coming up. And uh, so sit back and enjoy. Uh, this is what's playing right now. It's Simple Machine Rock. And it's by DJ Me and DJ U. This is a 1999 techno record. It's on Emperor Norton Records. And uh, I came across this in a thrift store. Thought I'd pick it up. It, it's pretty cool. It's uh, kind of a mixture of techno and uh, kind of an Eastern psych feel to it as well. There's some tabla and sitar thrown in. The only thing I don't like about it, it has a lot of voice sampling, which I don't care for, but yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. This is Freak Out, the great new guitar sound, and uh, it's a low budget album, guitar instrumentals, it's on Premiere. It says Freak Out Guitar on the label, and it's got a cover version of Ruby Tuesday and cover version of There's Kind of a Hush, and the rest of it is all uh, supposedly original material. And uh, there's three distinct styles. There's some Ventures guitar st sounding stuff on here. There's some Link Ray styled stuff. And uh, there's some early 60s dance music styled stuff with a lot of horn. Uh, the last track on here is listed as Dig Ye Deep, which is basically a reworking of Link Ray's Rumble. Um, yeah, for a low budget album, it's pretty cool. It's probably better than a lot of them. Uh, this is Homer and Jethro, Life Can Be Miserable. And this is a country comedy album from 1959. And it's on RCA Living Stereo. And uh, yeah, I would say for being from 1959, this is pretty rare in stereo. And it's the earliest of early run. If you look in the trail off, it's got a 1S stamper. I haven't had a chance to listen to this yet, but it should be pretty cool. Great album cover by Jack Davis, who also did Johnny Cash's Everybody Loves a Nut. Okay, now I'm going to show some autographed albums that actually came out of thrift stores over the years, believe it or not. And the first one I'm going to show is The Ventures Walk Don't Run, Volume 2. And it's signed on the back. It's signed by Mel Taylor and Noki Edwards, who were original Ventures members. And there's a third signature on here, and it looks like Joe something. And uh, I have no clue who that is. I tried to research it out, and I came up empty. He may have just been somebody who was out on the road with them, filling in for uh, a member who was ill or whatever. I don't know who it is, but it may even have been the original owner of the record. Who knows? Okay, this is Dr. Sadistic and the Silver King Crybabies. The name of the album is Maroon Balls. And look at that. Autographed on the back. It's autographed by Terry. And it's autographed by Steve Sandwich. This is a really good album. It's rock, kind of rock. It's it's kind of tubes like, but it's not. But it's a little more comedy than tubes. And uh, it's sort of a rock, a little bit of a new wave sound thrown in. And it's uh, on the Maroon Balls label, I guess, out of Colorado. And uh, it's from 81, I think. And look at the, just look at these song titles. I mean, just the titles alone are hilarious. It's got an insert. So, Zach, keep your eyes peeled. It's in your neighborhood. Okay, this is Spirit. Um, this one did not come out of a thrift store. 
and it's autographed by Randy California on the front cover and this was like this was a promotional copy this is actually what this is it came out on Rhino in uh, 81 and it's it's the album that Epic Records refused to release. It was originally recorded in 1973, right after the uh, first Captain Copter um, album. And uh, it's really weird. I could see why Epic wouldn't release it. But uh, eventually, uh, Randy California released it. Um, he did a lot of updated overdubbing on it. It's not as it was originally intended. Um, but it's still pretty interesting. It's pretty it's pretty weird actually. And it, it has a promotional photo on the inside that uh, is signed by Ed Cassidy. And it also came with the Captain Copter comic book. It's got quite a few pages. Yeah, this is just this is just a pretty weird album. It's hard to believe it was he you know was he was trying to put it out in '73. It's got a order form, you can order t-shirts and whatever. So that's pretty cool. Okay, here's another one that I did not get out of a thrift store. Autograph Neil Young, 1983, after the gold rush. And I bought this in the late 90s at Rockaway Records for $40. Um, it's not authenticated, but I would say that that signature is real because I, I mean, you look at the N, the N is the dead giveaway, just the way the N is signed. And I've compared that to a lot of Neil Young autographs and this is dead on. So I'm pretty sure this is authentic. Neil did play here in 83, played at ASU, so that's probably when this was autographed. But guy autographed Neil Young album, 40 bucks. Okay, this is one that did come out of a thrift store. It's Frankie Lane, Hell Bent for Leather. And there it is, signed on the back. And uh, Frankie Lane, he was just a pop male pop vocalist, and he put out this uh, Johnny Cash styled album and this is the guy that sang the theme song for Rawhide you know roll it roll it roll it so that's pretty cool Six Eye Columbia label great looking label there Okay, this, is, this came out of a thrift store. This is John Stewart. And look, I've even still got the original Goodwill sticker stuck on there. I bought it, it's actually, uh, I bought it in 2012, 99 cents. So what this has got, it's got, um, it's got a printed John Stewart autograph right here, here below his portrait. And then it's got the real signature right here at the side. And this album is from 1970, and it's on, uh, oh, it's got an insert. And the name of this album is Willard, it's on the Green Capital label. And he started out in the Kingston Trio. Uh, he was a, not an original member, but he was in there in the early mid-60s. 
And then, of course, he had that big hit gold that he did with Stevie Nicks. And he passed away um, in 08. Okay, uh, last and certainly least of the autographed albums is Silver Throat, Bill Cosby. And uh, I got this like maybe 10 years ago in a thrift store. And it's a 1967 album on Warner Brothers Records. It's on the gold label. And it's Cosby doing R&B songs. And uh, he does Bright Likes Big City, Big Boss Man, I Got a Woman, among others. And uh, I used to think this was a pretty cool thing to have. But now with the scandal, uh, I'm not very proud of it anymore. And that guy just totally, his reputation's gone. Okay, um, now I'm going to show a few Alice Cooper records. This is my copy of Schools Out with the desk cover. And this is the very first pressing. Is it doesn't have the song titles on the back of the desk. And uh, it opens up like this. And it has the paper panties on the inside. And I remember, I don't know if this is just urban legend or what it is, but I remember hearing in the 70s that they discontinued the panties because uh, people were putting them on and they were getting a rash. Now, I don't know how true that is, but... <laughs> And I think they came in two different colors, um, white and pink or white and blue or something, I don't know. And it's on the green Warner Brothers label. And uh, you guys have my word, I've never tried those on. Uh, this is my copy of Alice Cooper Billion Dollar Babies, the wallet cover. And it has the giant billion dollar bill on the inside which was discontinued from uh, later pressings and it has sort of a uh, unipack styled cover where the record comes out right here inner sleeve and if you look inside I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up but if you look inside you can actually see the album credits printed on the inside of the pocket And these are actually um, perforated punch-out cards that you could uh, pop out and stick in your wallet or whatever you wanted to do with them. And this is a quadraphonic 1974 Billion Dollar Babies. I think I got this in a thrift store. It doesn't have the billion dollar bill ever and it doesn't have the rounded covers and it doesn't have the um, uni-packed pocket. So it doesn't even have the um, album credits on it. It's got the inner sleeve. This is Electric Mud by Muddy Waters, and it's on Cadet Concept. And 
and uh, in the late 60s he was trying to appeal to the hippie crowd um, which is kind of bizarre but so this is like uh, this is like heavy acid rock versions of R&B it's pretty cool actually And this has a booklet in it that I'll show. Yes, yeah, from 68. It's got Hoochie Coochie Man. I just want to make love to you. Let's spend the night together. I'm a man. Among others. And uh, check out the length of the songs. It, his, they got it down into seconds instead of minutes. That's pretty cool. And this is the follow up. Um, 1969. And it is uh, After the Rain. Pretty weird cover. Um, and it looks like he just crawled out of a swamp. And I actually got this in a thrift store. And check this out. It's got all this weird water damage and fungus and all this stuff growing on the album cover. So it's actually kind of goes along with the concept of the artwork, which is pretty strange. Cadet concept label. And this is kind of just more along the lines of that electric mud. It's not as good, I don't think. But it's just like, you know, sort of heavy acid rock, R&B. Okay, this is um, Best of the Buffalo Springfield. It's a double album. Came out in 73, if I'm not mistaken. And I just wanted to show this because uh, some of you might not know that this has the full length version of Bluebird on it, which is um, nine minutes long. So it's twice as long as the version that was on uh, Buffalo Springfield again. So very cool to have that. So pick it up. This is something I got out of a thrift store, and it is from Wallach's Music City. And uh, I believe it was from, in, they were in Hollywood. And it's Jefferson Airplane after bathing at Baxter's. And they were a music store, and it was a lending library, and they probably had these in the store we could go into a listening booth and listen to the album or maybe check it out take it home or whatever but uh, I read the Wikipedia on this store and in 1965 Frank Zappa worked there as a clerk so that's pretty interesting but I've never seen one of these before and uh, to have it is you know a, a really cool band like the airplane I mean that's that's a bonus and this is my copy of Bless It's Little Head, a uh, live Jefferson Airplane. And this has a promotional embossed stamp right here. You can barely see it, really. Um, you almost have to look at it at an angle to read it. But it says, uh, not for sale, um, promotion. So, yeah, orange label got the insert I'm sure everybody's seen so that's just another thing to keep your eyes peeled for you know you might be looking at this album in the bin and not even know that it had that boss stamp there this is a 1966 album Liverpool a five arrive and it's garage styled rock and uh, there's several songs on here that were written by uh, 
Curtis Mayfield and there's also a song on here that was actually written by uh, Alan Klein which is kind of bizarre all you Beatle people might know who Alan Klein is and uh, Yeah, it's got I'm Not Your Stepping Stone, and it's also got Heart, which uh, was done by uh, The Remains. And they do a real cool, heavy version, well, not heavy version, but a real cool version of it. And the Heart actually came out on a 45 as well, I have that single. So, yeah, I think they had a couple albums, and uh, I think I got this uh, pretty dirt cheap somewhere. A few bucks. Um, this is the first Sweetwater album. It's still in the shrink and it's got a Globe Department Store sticker on the front. Two dollars and thirty-nine cents. I used to go to Globe when I was a, a teenager in the 70s. I used to go in and always hit the cutout bins and stuff. And this is an original orange top label. And this is sort of a sort of Latin rock, a little bit of a Santana vibe on it, but there's a couple of really good psych tunes on here. My Crystal Spider and In a Rainbow. So this is a real good album. I used to have all their albums. Um, but this one's the best. Uh, this is Houston Fearless and it's on Lit Imperial. And it's from 68. It's their only album. And it starts off with an iron butterfly feel. Uh, kind of weird uh, instrumental introduction. Sounds a lot like an iron butterfly. And uh, it's got a cover version of Race with the Devil by Gun. They do a pretty competent version of that. And they also do a, a heavy version of Mr. Saul by the Buffalo Springfield. And uh, not a great album, but quite good and uh, well worth grabbing, I would think. I wouldn't say it's essential, but it's pretty cool. And uh, while I just showed that, here is a ad for that album from a magazine. And there's the original photograph that the album cover was made from. It's pretty cool. And also, in this, while well, I've got it open, here's an ad for Standell amplifiers. And there was a certain band that uh, named themselves after Standell equipment. Um, God, the, I can't think of who that would be, but I think you guys know who it is. Um, so that's pretty cool. And look, look at that rack, man. They got the, the amplifier right in the center with the speakers mounted on the, below it and up above it. Kind of cool. And, oh, by the way, look who's on the front of this. Jimmy. And I got this, actually got this out of a thrift store, believe it or not. It was hanging on a rack. And they had a bunch of these old guitar player magazines in plastic bags. And I can't remember what I got this for, but it was like, you know, probably a quarter or something. This is the most collectible guitar player magazine that there is, Jimi Hendrix on the front, um, December 1968, and I'll show, here is the article, and the way that they wrote the article is there's a lot of, it's not like a direct interview with Jimmy, but there's a lot of his quotes thrown in. So it's kind of a mixture of an article and uh, guitar uh, inter interview quotes. So that's 
pretty pretty awesome thing to have okay this is Dave Davies the album that never was and it's from 1987 and it's on the PRT label the label that it's a UK label that was putting out Kinks records in the 80s and it's basically all his Dave Davies recordings that he did with the Kinks and uh, in some countries he was actually marketed as a solo artist um, but I believe uh, in, in, definitely in the US and maybe the UK it was just he was marketed strictly as uh, Kinks but yeah this is this is a really good album I think it was um, pretty limited um, I don't think it was out very long at all so Dave Davies the album that never was this is another PRT release Kinks greatest hits and it came out in 83 I bought this when it was new so it's just basically got popular Kinks tracks on the album and then it came with a free bonus 10 inch The album cover claims six previously unreleased tracks on record, um, which is true for the UK, but in the, in the US some of these were released on the Great Lost Kinks album. But there's two tracks on here, um, uh, Spotty Grotty Anna and Time Will Tell. And those were previously unreleased and I don't believe that they got permission to release those tracks or actually maybe not even any of this stuff in the UK because they pulled um, all the material off of the 10 inch and they reissued this album with just more popular hits so this is pretty pretty interesting pretty interesting and rare to have and uh, I got this uh, article about it out of uh, Pulse magazine which is a magazine that Tower Records used to put out and this is a 1983 clipping and um, there's a little bit of it right here I'll try and get a close-up of it so you can maybe read it not terribly expensive um, I checked on what these were going for once um, probably 40 50 bucks something like that I don't know I can't remember <clears throat> okay lastly is the Yardbirds and this is a bootleg it's the last rave up in LA Recorded live at the Shrine Auditorium in L.A. May and June of 68. Pretty cool picture there on the front. This is a 1979 bootleg. And it's a numbered edition. I got 79 of 500. But I've seen some of these that were not numbered. So I think they made another run of them. They just didn't number them. And, uh... I got this sealed at a record show in the 90s. It's on Glimpses Records. 3 LPs. It's got a couple of inserts. This is like an order form where you could order a uh, unused album cover slicks, t-shirts, and photos that were used on the album cover. And then this is just some weird liner notes about whoever put this out. They're just rambling and bam, blambling or 
about uh, just weird information there. All right. This has got some pretty interesting material on it. I, li I hadn't listened to it in a while, so I kind of put a little of it on last night. The sound quality is about what you would expect. And uh, they do, well, it says they do a medley here. Uh, it's like a 11 minute medley. And um, Smokestack Lightning, Bex Bolero, and Velvet Undergrounds, I'm Waiting for the Man. Uh, Bex Bolero is not on there, so that's BS. Smokestack Lightning is on there, but it's got totally different lyrics that I'd never heard before. And then they go into a probably a four or five minute version of I'm Waiting for the Man by the Velvet Underground, which is really cool. Um, it's got sort of a heavy garage sound to it. And then there's also a song on here that they do. I don't know who did it originally, but it's called Bye Bye Blur Bird. And it's right here. And it's largely instrumental, but there is some vocal on it, and there's a lot of harmonica by Ralph on there. And it says it's it it, it came out um, three years after Keith Ralph died, and it says dedicated to the memory of Keith Ralph. So yeah, this is a cool, cool one. I remember um, seeing this. In the, in the record store, um, probably around 1980, 80, 81 time frame. But I didn't get it because um, it was costly at the time. I, I think they had 35 bucks on it. I paid 40 for this uh, in the 90s sealed. So it's great shape. Oh, I got, oh man, oh. This is, this is going to be a long one. I've still got a few things to show here. I, I got a, a couple more um, autograph things to show. Uh, this is uh, Buzz Cox, and it's signed by uh, the early members. Howard DeVoto was originally in the band, but this these were signed uh, after he left. And I did some checking, and these appear to be earlier signatures, not from the 89 reunion tour that they did. And um, it's actually signed on the record as well. I got two signatures there. And it's signed on the back, the flip side, but uh, Diggle's uh, autograph is smudged. So, yeah, I would say probably worth about 75 bucks with all those signatures on it. And this one I got in person. It's Oingo Boingo. And uh, in 80, 83, um, they were playing a club and they did a in-store uh, appearance. And I went and I met the band. And uh, so I got this signed, and it's the 10 inch Oingo Boingo Only a Lad 1980 EP. And it has, uh, it's got some Danny Elfman tunes, and then it's got Violent Love by Willie Dixon. And the version of Only a Lad on this is different than what came out on the, the full length album. And, uh, I had it signed to Brad because that's the name I grew up with as a kid. It's my middle name. And everybody signed it except for the keyboard player. He was not there, which I was kind of bummed out about. But he was on the verge of leaving the band anyway. I think the next year he left. He was almost out of the band. And actually, right after I saw them, um, the band started breaking up. So I'm glad that I saw them. Uh, when I did, um, and when I say breaking up, I meant band members leaving and stuff like that. But look at Danny Elfman's signature right there. And uh, actually, the the horn section in this band, um, 
go back to the early 70s, um, I think it was uh, Danny Elfman's brother actually founded uh, Oingo Boingo. They were called the Mystic Knights of Oingo Boingo. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys that were in the band at this time date back to the 70s. Uh, Danny Elfman joined in 74. And they're in the Hot Rock and Roll Hall of Fame now. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you know that Danny Elfman did a lot of great soundtrack music for TV shows and movies. And so, you know, this is a pretty neat thing to have. I shook hands with the band. It was, it was really cool. Okay, I got one more thing here, but you know what? Uh, I think I'm going to say goodbye. I, this has gone on too long, and uh, I'll show it next time. So, I hope I didn't chew your ears off. Um, take care, guys. I'll see you next time.